Balloons. Taxonomy. What do you think that means? Flowers. If you had to guess. Flowers. What type of flowers? Roses. Roses. Okay. Hi, I'm Miss Mac, or Lacey, on days that I remember that I actually have a first name. I'm going to give you a quick and relatively watered down overview of Bloom's taxonomy with a specific focus on the cognitive processes. My explanations may be a little elementary, but I hope that this helps you guide your thinking when you're unpacking your standards, planning objectives or learning targets, and figuring out how to differentiate in your classrooms. Bloom's taxonomy is a framework that helps teachers categorize educational objectives and increase the rigor of their questioning. It's also sometimes used as an evaluative tool for course objectives and assessments to make sure that teachers are challenging their students above the level of mere factual recall. This is actually the first image I ever saw of Bloom's when I was first learning it. It's in a pyramid shape. It has knowledge at the bottom, comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis, all the way to evaluation at the top. And, or if you're using my pyramid, evaluate Ian. The categories or levels operate in increasing degrees of difficulties. That is, the first must be mastered before the next one can occur. This is a picture of the revised version of Bloom's taxonomy. Or maybe I should say that this is a picture of my version of the revised version of Bloom's taxonomy. I've seen a few 3D examples that push teachers to develop objectives that incorporate even higher, more complex levels of thinking. But I personally like to think of Bloom's as more of a staircase. Students are climbing the staircase to the top, which is representative of either standard mastery or course completion or whatever else you want it to be. And when students have reached complete mastery, they should be able to utilize all six levels of thinking about your standard. Each stair could be another objective that altogether helps satisfy your overall standard. Seeing the steps actually gives my students a more tangible picture of how we're growing every day. Bloom's taxonomy is split into six different domains. As you go up the pyramid, or my staircase, the processes of thinking can get more specific and more challenging for students. Blooms can be used as a spectrum of sorts that varies between lower order thinking and higher order thinking with remembering being on the lower order and creating on the higher. So why, you ask, do we need blooms? Well, pretend for a moment that you're an English teacher. One of your unit standards is the following. Determine the meaning of words and phrases as they are used in the text, including figurative and connotative meanings. Analyze the cumulative impact of specific word choices on meaning and tone. This is actually a ninth grade standard, but let's see how my eighth graders do. Determine the meaning of words and phrases as they are used in the text, including figurative and con con connotative meanings. Analyze the cumulative impact on specific word choices on meaning and tone. Do you understand what any of that means? Um, determine the meaning of words and, and phrases. I wanted my 8th graders to read this standard so you can see how complicated the language is for a student to understand. It's up to us, the teachers, to break down these wordy and complicated standards into small daily or weekly objectives for our students to master. What Blooms does is enables teachers to organize their essential questions or learning targets into scaffolded categories with the goal of increasing rigor in small, manageable steps. Objectives aligned with the remembering domain are written to determine if a student can simply recall the information that they learned. At the lowest level, knowledge is the learning and recitation of facts. Aligning your objectives within the remembering domain utilizes the most basic form of questioning to test your student's knowledge. On the remember level, students are asked questions that begin with words like list, recognize, describe, match, label, or define. In this domain, you're testing a child's ability to recall learned factual information on command. Actually, many of my physical science standards fall into this domain. Describe the states of matter, identify Newton's laws, and label the parts of an atom. Rigor on these objectives can be increased by requiring students to do more with this information than simply reproduce it on an assessment, which conveniently leads us to our next cognitive domain. The next level of Blooms asks for students to take their ability to recall factual information to the next level to prove their understanding by building some kind of relationship between learned facts to construct meaning. 
What you, the teacher, should be looking for is a child's ability to explain or demonstrate their understanding of the concepts using their own words or actions. In this level of Blooms, students are asked questions that ask them to do things like interpret, summarize, infer, compare, explain, or classify. In the application stage, students are asked to actually use their acquired knowledge to solve problems in a different way, relying on their own instincts to make decisions. When students are tested on their ability to apply knowledge, they will be asked questions that begin with words like use, execute, implement, show, or exhibit. In this stage, teachers are trying to determine if their students can carry out a procedure by using their previously acquired knowledge about a subject. The analysis level asks students to deconstruct information into smaller pieces, allowing them to make inferences about the information that they are learning. As a teacher, you are testing a student's ability to determine how parts come together to form a whole. Analytical questions begin with words like analyze, dissect, infer, diagram, or examine. This is my favorite domain to use in my science class because my students are able to really showcase their knowledge and begin to demonstrate higher order thinking. Evaluation tests the student's ability to justify a stand or decision. Can your student appraise or critique something on the basis of specific standards or criteria? To test this, questions can begin with words like test, judge, reflect, predict, or justify. And finally, we have creation. The creation domain asks students to combine information in a whole new way to propose alternative solutions or to create a new product or new point of view. To pose these questions to students, you should begin with words like assemble, combine, create, design, invent, or develop. I hope that this video taught you a little bit about Bloom's taxonomy, and I also hope that you are able to focus on anything other than my desperate need of a manicure. But before you go, I wanted to leave you with my favorite quote by Bill Nye that I use in my classroom every day to unite us all in scientific discoveries. Everyone you will ever meet knows something that you don't. Thanks for watching.